What time is it there? I'm so confused. It's currently 11. So if the, if the lighting's a bit funny, 11 in the morning, mind you. Okay. <laughs> so 11 a.m. <laughs> okay, yeah, when we were going back and forth, I was getting so confused on the time. I had no idea. Yeah, I time zones really confuse me. Even when I'm traveling internationally, I'm like, where am I? What time is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We are recording, by the way. That's okay. No problems. Okay. okay. So yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I've been wanting to do one of these for so long and such a big fan of the show. Well, I appreciate it. So uh, you do do a lot of podcasts? I do. I do. So yeah. um, when Wannabe was released, that was I was just wanted to jump at the opportunity because I, I love, um, I watched the, the Bobby Brown one recently and I was yeah. like, oh, and I read her book and everything. So Did you? super, super yeah. cool. Yeah, she is a cool one. I, yeah. en I enjoyed that one. That was a fun one. Yeah, so I'm sure. doing video now, as you can see. So hopefully uh, I can get her back on here soon. Yeah, absolutely. But, so yeah, so you have a new single out. Uh, it's been out for what, a couple months now? It has, it has. And that's Wannabe? Yes. Okay, and that, let me get this straight. And that's on your EP Flirt? It is on my EP Flirt. So okay. I released my second EP recently called Flirt. And I was really, really stoked to have this out because I've never put um, hard copy um, music out that has live stuff on it. And I think obviously there's a there's definitely magic to live stuff. And I'm, I'm really feel like I'm um, connected to my music the most when I'm doing live stuff. So that was really exciting for me. But Wannabe was just, it was really the epitome of my high school experience. So it was cool for me to be able to put that one out. Okay. So on your EP, how many songs are on there? There's five. Five songs. Okay. Yes. And they're not all live. No. So three of them are um, recorded uh, in the studio and two of them are live. Okay. And how was that recording live? Yeah, I, I, I had such a blast. I have a really, really cool band. And um, I'm not sure if you know this, um, my dad, Steve Janewski, joins me on um, guitar in my band. So it's always right. cool to be able to play um, with my father in um, the band. And I just, I love the guys so much. They're such uh, talented musos. And I'm just stoked to have it out there because it was really exactly what I wanted and exactly what I wanted to put out for people. Awesome. Now, let me ask you about your band. Who is in, in your band? Yes. So my backing band um, consists of a couple of members of Wicked Smile, my dad's band right. currently. Right. So um, I have Glenn Cav on bass guitar, Steve Janewski, my father, on lead guitar. Sorry, bass guitar. And then lead, lead guitar is Steve Janewski and uh, Jason Tyro on drums. Okay. Did they record on the album, on your songs? No. So um, I work with Paul Lane. Uh, right. I don't know if you're aware of the stuff that he's done, but he's um, a heavyweight in the industry and I'm so privileged to be able to work with him. Uh, it's just been such a cool experience and we've been riding together since I was probably 13 or 14. So I'm just very, very lucky and grateful to have him on my team and supporting me and guiding me in the music industry because at the end of the day, um, it is a very difficult industry to kind of break into. Sure. And although I have my father, I have such an awesome support network around me. So um, Paul has al always been such a driving force um, behind my music. Okay. Now your father, he's been, he was a big part of you becoming what you are now. Yes. Um, so what, what age did you start getting into the music? Yeah, for sure. Um, so my dad has always exposed me to such a wide range of music. Uh, he was always, uh, he always said to me when I was younger, a good song is a good song. So he never restricted right, me right. to purely rock music. Um, we listened to a bunch of things, but rock music was obviously what I was drawn to. And we just kind of bonded through that. So he you know, he showed me my first, like, um, favorite band. So, like, I've listened to Dawkins since a young age. I've listened yes. to Tesla. You can't see the T-shirt, but I am sporting a Tesla T-shirt today. Nice. Um, nice. I listened to, like, I've been so, seen uh, Motley Crue. I've seen Kiss live. All of those little experiences, I think, led me to pursue 
um, music in the rock music industry and kind of um, get my foot in the door. But yeah, no, my dad was a huge influence on me from a young age. I remember standing in the crowd and just being in awe of him playing guitar. So it was yeah. it's such a cool experience and I'm very, very grateful for that. And what age did you start playing? Yeah, so I, I started playing when I was guitar, I want to say six or seven. Vocals, okay. I picked up a little bit later, um, nine or 10, I want to say. And yeah, I've never looked back. Vocals are obviously like my one true love. Yeah. But um, yeah, guitar, I love guitar. Yeah. So when, when did you realize that you could sing? Like, how did that happen? it was a realization thing I think more I've always been been singing like and I know a lot of singers will say the same thing but I was singing in the shower I was dancing around and uh singing my favorite rock songs from a very very young age um there's footage on like home home footage on like the the really uh historic cameras right, <laughs> um right. that we've fished out recently and there's me just dancing around to like do and stuff when i was really young so oh, that's great now that's always cool but um i i think one thing my dad really instilled in me is that you need to work hard in order to become a good singer and i know that i'm always learning and i'm always going to be progressing even when and he says it himself he says it um he's 40 49 and he's still learning like he's you're never gonna be the best you always have to progress and get better and um I think that was really important lesson for me to learn as a youngster and I'll mm -hmm. car carry that through my entire journey mm -hmm. now your dad I listened to his band too I was curious and and they're yes. very good very thank uh, you well I, I say thank you on part of him <laughs> yeah 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 um yeah, they have a little bit of an Iron Maiden sound, I thought. Yes, definitely. Um, it's kind of a fuse between like Iron Maiden, Skid Row. Like, um, I'm Wicked Smile is definitely my favorite stuff that my dad's ever produced, and he's been in a couple of things over um, the time of being my father. So, mm. uh, yeah, he's he's just so so connected to um, the music, and I'm just. I'm, I'm a fangirl really. And I love showing up to their shows and hanging out with the guys. It's some of my favorite memories in the world. Yeah. So what's your mom think through all this? Is she supportive of the music, the rock star? Uh, she is. Pursuing? She has to live with two rock stars. So, yeah. and I'm, I say rock stars in quotation marks, but sure. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> my mom's always been a huge supporter as well. And um, I think she was going to support me. My parents are very, open and they just um would support me in anything i choose to pursue so i'm very very lucky in mm. that aspect but um when i chose to pick up um the guitar and sing i think my dad wasn't he wasn't uh mad at all <laughs> yeah yeah it's a tough business though so but at least you got Absolutely. some good guidance yeah, yeah for sure now um when you first went into the studio you were pretty young right yes like, i was 13. Were you? 13 yeah i was 13 13 when I headed into the studio for the first time um, and I was recording my debut single talk about it and that was just such a cool experience uh, obviously having the ability to do that when I was 13 years old not many youngsters get that opportunity so I was not just in yeah in awe of everything um, taking it all in and I actually traveled not long ago not long after that to Japan um, to do a couple of shows there so I was 14 when I did that and that was just a huge huge eye-opening experience eye-opening experience for me as a muso. Um, I think that all of those memories have obviously shaped who I want to become as an artist and who I am now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at 13 and 14, you're in the studio recording a single. Good song, by mm -hmm. the way. Um, Thank now, you. When you're 13, are you writing that or are you co-writing? What's going on there? Yeah. So, um, Paul Lane came out for the first time to Australia, I think a couple of years prior to that. And I expressed an interest in music um, the first time he came over and I knew what I wanted to do. And we, when he came over the second time, we were like, we sat down and had the conversation and I was like, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to pursue. And it's like my one passion. I've been playing guitar for a couple of years. I've been singing and taking lessons for a couple of years prior to that as well. Um, and I, 
I I knew that I wanted to work with someone that was not only level headed um, and knew like the ins and outs of the music industry, but also just a, a really killer songwriter. And I knew that I needed to learn. Um, and I think my dad also knew that as well. So working with Paul has always been the most rewarding experience because you just see how much uh, like passion and um, energy goes into the music that he produces and writes with artists. So sure. I think I've definitely learned a lot from that experience. So we co-write um, everything that I do, um, except for Give Me Your Aloe Vie, which he wrote and I kind of made my own. Okay. So do you like, I assume you like co-writing with others? Definitely. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay. Um, what are some of your influences that you, like you mentioned the doc and, and Tesla and, the, and that whole sound, but what about your, your personal influences that you found? For sure. I think it obviously varies. Um, I know that I'm, and I'm very aware that I'm a bridging artist. So I have elements of pop and rock mm -hmm. uh, and obviously pop is anything, but um, mainstream pop is what I'm meaning and referring to. But I think definitely I have elements of like Joan Jett, uh, Pat Benatar, Lita Ford. Those are some of my main female in influences. And mm -hmm. I love um, people like Eric Gromwell from Heat. He, um, or X Heat now, uh, he has been one of my ultimate uh, like influences since I was very young. I've always watched him and just, I think he's such an awesome performer. And then I love people like, I love Steven Tyler from Aerosmith. I think he's awesome. Um, one of those performers that I'll just never truly quite get over. He's amazing. Um, so it, it's a range of people and I think it's always changing. I love people like um, Lizzie Hale and Taylor Momsen from The Pretty Reckless. Like it, it's a range of people. And I think that I have elements of everyone and I try to combine to make myself my own person. So that's okay. Have you ever had a chance to meet any of your influences? I have actually had a chance to meet one of my influences, but she's in a different sector of the music industry. I met Taylor Swift when I was really young. Did you? Um, wow. Yeah. And she definitely um, shaped me as an artist as well. I think her connection with her fans is something that I really admired and looked up to because obviously the fans are what makes you um, popular and what makes you sure, an, an, sure. an artist, really. If they're not listening, then, you know, it, it's nothing right. without yeah. them. Yeah. Exactly. Did you see so her? Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Did you see her little film she did for, uh, what I was did. it, on Netflix, maybe? The Miss Americana? Yeah. yeah, I, I'm, yeah. A huge, I'm a huge Taylor fan. So, um, yeah. no, I'm a big fan of what she does and what she stands for so um it was it was super cool and I was really young I was like nine years old when I met her so having that experience you know she's she influenced me and she made me want to pursue music as well so um mm. I hope that someday I have that effect on artists and um artists to come right right tell me about let's go back a little bit to went to Japan yes. now how did that all play out like how did you get shows in japan and how to go for sure yeah um japan was just crazy good i i can't um even explain how like lucky i was to have that experience especially at that age as well right. um my dad's band um the radio sun were actually gigging there at the time as well so i came over as a support to them and I played a couple of shows and we obviously were aligned with, um, or the radio sun were aligned with a um, touring company over there. And uh, we did a couple of shows and did a couple of signing sessions. And I just, Japan, Japanese fans are, they're incredible. I've never met fans in the world like them. They're just so in tune with, um how to kind of uh, communicate with people and obviously yeah. speak different languages but they're just so they love the music they really really do and you can see it on their faces when you're singing the lyrics to your song um and it was just crazy I couldn't even believe uh how awesome that experience was going to be and I'll never take that for granted were you nervous being that young absolutely absolutely it had to be um, I think this is something that I talk about a lot. Um, I think the nerves have obviously 
gone away now yeah, um, because yeah. I've played a couple of shows and everything. And um, but yeah, heading over to Japan, it's a different country, so you don't know what it's going to be, what right. the uh, how it's going to be received. Obviously, yeah. so um, yeah. But I and I ob- after that also did um, gig in Chicago. So I think that was a year later. I want to say, um, so yeah, that was also a really, really cool opportunity. I played at a festival there and it was nice. one, I think that was my first electric, uh, song that I did. So yeah, okay. that was pretty cool. And was that with your dad? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you have plans of coming back to the U S absolutely. Um, my management is actually located in the, in the U S so, oh, okay. um, any, any chance I get to come over to the U S I will, um, definitely looking at like touring and, uh, heading over to the U S very, very soon. So I'm very excited about that. And I've also got a UK tour in the works, um, next year. So nice. that's also equally exciting. Nice. Nice. Now, are you doing all this stuff on your own? Or, or is there a label backing you or how's that working for you? So I'm independent at the moment. Um, I have management, uh, like I said, in the US. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm working as an independent artist at the moment. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy with how things are going. Um, Wannabe was my um, best received single to date. So yeah. I was really, really like excited. To, yeah, and I had, I had a lot of obviously um, support and people, networks and stuff sharing it. And uh, I just, I couldn't believe the response I was getting I always say that um I use this as an example in high school I I just I couldn't believe how mean and horrible people could be but it also showed me through music and everything how incredibly um supportive people can be worldwide because I had never met some of these people and they were sending me Mm -hmm. the most lovely um supportive messages and it really really did get me through what I was going through with bullying and everything in high school so Mm -hmm was extremely um like uplifting what, what kind of kid were you in high school yeah I, I was definitely um you could say the outcast uh oh, yeah. to an extent um I had probably <laughs> like I had a couple of friends but a lot of people really didn't understand the music thing and um sure. didn't really understand what I was doing rock music was kind of like a taboo um music uh genre in high school for me as well it was um, either I also went to a I should preface that I went to a school that was actually a music well kind of a music school so okay. they they're supposed to have a really really strong music program there and I felt like I was not supported at all um, so obviously I started off doing music there but it was jazz music so I kind of shifted away no hate on jazz musicians I just um yeah. I wasn't into it myself um but yeah so when I headed into high school obviously I had been brought up in a family and a community like the rock community in Melbourne and everything that have always been so supportive so inclusive so when mm. I headed into high school it was very very different <laughs> to mm. that and I couldn't understand how people Um, would be mocking me for something that I really really loved and um, it's funny because it kind of turned on its head towards the end of high school and people would start saying obviously like when I got things like the the Fender endorsement that would come up to me and um, be like oh I heard about that I'm so proud of you Um, and it, it just kind of messed with my head a bit because I was like you were the ones who were harassing me before and you were hating on what I was doing but when it's definitely a case of tall poppy syndrome here in Australia and I think um that's it's kind of sad to to be Mm. honest with you but um yeah like I said I had a couple of really really great supportive friends and I was not mad that I didn't have um more than like two or three friends in high school because um, they were just really really loyal and that's all I needed yeah that's all you need so in high school, you mentioned, you know, it was a little rough. So, and now you're involved with, what is it? The Metalheads for Bullying against or something bullying. like that? Yes. Tell so me about that. I'm, yeah. So I'm a Metalheads Against Bullying ambassador and I'm so, so grateful to be one. I, I think that sharing my story was, or like the decision to share my story was something that I was kind of umming and ahhing for, for a while there. 
And when this opportunity arose to be an ambassador, it just, it was a no brainer for me because I was reading stories of people that have gone through similar things to me. And obviously if I could help one person through sharing my story, I will absolutely do that. It mm -hmm. was just a really, really cool experience. So many people were so, so supportive throughout the entire um, me kind of showing the internet what I had been through and telling them about my experience. So it was the Metalheads Against Bullying community is just so inclusive and that's what I love about them. Um, and I'm, yeah, really, really stoked to be a part of it. Okay. Okay. Well, good. That's, that's good when you can do something like that, you know, especially something that you, that affected you before. Absolutely. So what do you think has been the most challenging part of being a musician so far? at your age yeah for sure I think um in terms of challenges I think high school obviously was a huge challenge for me um because people didn't really see what I was about and it was coming to terms with that but after you kind of get over that hurdle it was kind of um it's kind of really awesome for me because I knew that when I was going into the music industry, this was going to be a regular occurrence. Not everyone's going to understand or like what you're doing. So I think that having that experience kind of primed me for what I'm going to experience in the music industry. Mm -hmm. I think it's always hard when you have keyboard warriors and stuff uh, kind of typing things and, you know, they would never say them to your face or directly right, to right. you. But um, for me, honestly, I think understanding or well, people understanding that I am a bridging artist and uh, kind of people getting their heads around that was kind of a difficult thing for me because I wasn't um, portraying myself as a, a full uh, blown metal head or like mm -hmm. uh, I know I'm a rock artist, but I'm also, I have elements of mainstream. I'm absolutely aware of that so when people are saying that I don't know the bands I'm wearing of t-shirts I absolutely do I sure. they're my favorite bands I um I'm not what we call here a cotton on t-shirt wearer I think it's like it's the same thing as wearing a t-shirt from like I don't know what your favorite like uh what your American stores are like there um but uh yeah, in, in Australia, if you're wearing a cotton on t-shirt of Def Leppard and you don't know the band, it's kind of a little bit, you know, you'll get... <laughs> Same uh, thing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I absolutely know all the bands. I've probably seen most of them as well. So yeah, yeah. Uh, that's one thing that I kind of try to, to drive because you can get confused. I completely understand that, but I, I know what I'm talking about in terms of my bands and everything. Right, right. I still have all of my band's t-shirts. From when I was younger and we used to go to all the shows, I still have all the original ones. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, I constantly, fun. constantly um, pick up, pick, pick out my dad's ones from when he was like yeah. uh, my age. And I'm like, I'm stealing that. That doesn't fit you anymore. Like, yeah. I, can, I can cut that and make that look cool. <laughs> yeah. I try to, I try to put some of them on and they don't, it doesn't work. <laughs> and some of them, I don't know, it was the time, but some of them are like cut at my belly. Yeah. Oh yeah, my God. glad there's no pictures of that around. It's funny because I um, was actually with a family friend recently and I was like looking through all his old t-shirts and everything. And he was like, I wish I didn't cut these into a singlet. That was kind yeah. of like the, it was the vibe then. And I was like, no, it's cool. Like I, I actually dig it. But um, yeah, he was like, I wish I didn't touch it because now I, I could have actually worn it, but yeah. I can't. Because... Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I have a few of those cut all the way down the side there and, it's like, and yeah, I tied yeah. it at the, tied it together. And like, oh, yeah. how was I thinking? <laughs> oh my God. Um, so you make videos a lot too. I noticed which mm -hmm. not a lot of people do, um, yep. especially on the, you know, being an indie artist. What, um, sure. do you have, um, like, does your dad help with that? Or, I mean, how do you get those done? In terms of music videos, is that what you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, so absolutely. I, I've worked with a couple of people that have, um, produced and, uh, uh, 
kind of put out the music videos that I that I do. Um, I try to release music videos quite consistently because I think it just it goes alongside the song and I love releasing them together. Um, and obviously there's a storyline. And like I was saying previously, I think there's a magic to performing and making sure that people are seeing that aspect of the song too and how mm. you kind of relate to the lyrics and everything. And you can see that in the expression um, on my face when I am performing things like Wannabe in, in the clips. So I think that was really important for me um, to do every single time I release something. But in terms of just videos in general, I think documenting everything is really important. I really want to see and be able to reflect and look back on what kind of artist I was or um, vocally how I was at this age. And I think I've already started to do that and kind of pick out things from when I was 13, 14 and be like, I've learned a lot since then. I can do this with my um, my range now. I couldn't do that before. So yeah. um, I, again, this is a lot about my father, but my, my dad really instilled in me from a young age to make sure that you're looking back on everything that you have previously done because it does make you a stronger musician, absolutely. And you are always learning and listening to yourself. As much as some people hate it, it's the best thing for you as an artist. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever listen back and go, oh my God, that's terrible? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think most musicians will say that. Like, definitely, sometimes you're not going to have a fantastic um, day vocally or you're not going to be, um, you know, in the right mindset, or, but that's definitely okay. And mm -hmm. it's all about learning and progressing and getting better. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be hard as a vocal vocalist, I always thought. Because like if you have a bad night, that's pretty noticeable or a bad recording, Absolutely. you know, whereas like myself, I'm a bass player, so I can make a bad note here and there. No one's going to really notice that as much. But a singer, For sure. forget about it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's also a thing that some people need to learn as well, because there are so many different elements that come into play when with vocals. Um, for instance, if if the vocalist gets sick and yeah. I know COVID, obviously, that's a huge thing at the moment. Yeah, um, yeah. So if the vocalist gets sick, if the weather changes when you fly over, if you were on an airplane previously, you have dry throat like this. There's so many elements that come into play when you're performing. So obviously when people like that, that was not fantastic vocally. Um, yeah. You have to think about every single element that the artist um, has encountered that yeah. week prior or a couple of weeks prior even. Yeah, yeah. What do you think when you see uh, some of these artists that you used to listen to singing now, for example, well, I'm not going to mention names, but some of them aren't quite that great on video still trying to do it what do you feel about that think they should keep trying um, or do you think it's time to throw in the hat i i, I love all these artists so i i'm not in the position to to um say anything negative obviously um but i think also uh making sure that it is a game obviously you have to make sure that you keep your vocals in the best state you can possibly uh yeah do for it um and i think obviously when other elements like drugs and alcohol and things come into play it does make a huge difference and keeping up making sure you have a good fitness routine and everything that's it's a huge thing and i'm constantly reminded of uh the how distressed your vocals can become um mm -hmm. when you introduce elements like that yeah uh and like I, uh, like you were saying, some artists obviously have abused some of those things. So uh, it's difficult to kind of watch and see that uh, kind of the downfall mm -hmm, of that. Mm -hmm. But um, obviously we have the, the great moments and stuff to reflect on. So I think that that's important. But yeah, I think it's keeping your, your vocals in the best shape possible. It's, it's really, really important. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good that you've, you see that because a lot of people I'm sure back back then didn't even think of that you For know sure. what I mean? <laughs> absolutely did you get formal training singing did you get lessons yes. you did yes. okay um so i initially actually started training vocally with the singer from the radio sun jason old um of my dad's uh band 
And now I'm uh, training with a, a vocalist uh, here in Melbourne and she's absolutely fantastic. Um, adore everything she's done. And uh, she's made me definitely a stronger singer and she's um, kind of shown me a lot of ways to overcome some of those elements that I was mm. discussing before. And it's really important to know your way around the muscle because uh, vocal cords, are, they can be very very interesting uh muscles and you, that's sure. the, that's the thing you have to understand that it is a muscle and it it will obviously um vary on certain days depending on what you've encountered mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now with when you when did you release your ep how long ago yeah so the ep was released I think it was the 1st of September. Um, okay. So yeah, I was really, really stoked to have that out there. Like I was saying, um, the EP was definitely something like we we're talking about reflection before. Um, I think it does really show my growth as an artist over the last two years since I've released um, Broken Hearted, my, um, my debut EP. Uh, and I think that's, that's really important for sure um, to be able to understand that I'm always going to be growing and progressing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So did COVID, did that all mess with the release of it or, or no? Like, did you have plans that you couldn't fulfill? Yeah. So definitely I was supposed to play live. I think it was the first date was in June or July, and now it's February next year yeah. uh, here in Melbourne. So um, that was obviously kind of a hard pill to swallow because I love playing live so much. And my band had and I had been rehearsing all the time um, leading up to it. So it's, it's difficult, obviously, because that's my favorite thing in the world, apart from obviously producing and writing the music, um, performing and connecting with people. Um, and... Yeah, it, it is definitely a difficult thing to kind of digest, but I'm really, really excited to to get back out there and tour and play and connect with fans. Yeah. Are things open up out there yet or no? Everything's open currently. Okay. Um, so yeah, we had we had the gig booked for next year a while ago, um, just in case anything did happen. Mm -hmm. We only opened up very, very recently because it is the double double vaccination thing um, here. So you have to show your vaccination um, at every uh, shopping center, venue, um, you know it all. Um, you have to show that you're vaccinated and proof of that. So we kind of wanted to um, put it in Feb just to be just to be safe mm -hmm. and make sure that we actually are able to play that gig. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's it's disappointing, but I think um, I've come to terms with it, and I'm just really stoked to be out there very very soon. So that show you said it was what February? February fourth. Yeah. Okay. Now is that the official release? I guess party for your EP. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, no, very, very exciting. And um, I'm, it's my hometown. So it's exciting to be playing here. Mm -hmm. And I've been, like I said, rehearsing for this for so long. We've been prepping for this um, show for, for a long while. So it'll be, it'll be nice to be able to actually talk to people about the music and explain it a little bit further because Obviously, we have formats like this um, where we're able to explain our music, but it, it's different when you're talking to someone face to face and um, explaining your experiences and everything you've been through. Mm -hmm. What format is it going to be available on? The show? No, the, the EP. Is it a CD? Is oh, the it, what EP. Is it? The, mm -hmm. the EP, um, it's on all digital platforms at the moment. So all the music that's on the Flirt EP, you mm -hmm. can get, you can stream anywhere. Is it gonna you're gonna have a hard copy of it though or no? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, flirt, you, flirt you can get via the Cassie Paris website. Um, we have the hard copies. It's got my face on it, and sometimes <laughs> it's funny because I my friends will send me photos of like um, posters um, of my face, and I'm like, that's a little bit awkward. That's my face, and they're like, I can see you. I can see yeah. you. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, no, nah, it, it's super cool though. So um, yeah, so the flirt EP with the um, Oh no, that's the wannabe. I'm getting confused on my own music here and the, the oh, cover geez. up. <laughs> no, the wannabe one has the finger and the flirt EP's got the side eye. So okay. look out for that. Okay. One. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so where can they get that now? Your website? Yeah, my website, castyparis.com. 
Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're pretty active on social media so people can find you on all platforms. All platforms. Yep. Cassidy Paris official. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, you know what, Cassie, I appreciate you taking the time chatting with me this evening. Well, thank you so morning much for, for you. <laughs> yes, the morning, the morning. But thank you so much for having me. Like I said, I've been wanting to do one of these for ages. So yeah. super, super cool to be able to hop on here and have a chat. Yeah, I mean, it was great. It was great. I'm, I apologize. We were trying to line this up, a, <laughs> what, a couple of weeks ago now, I guess, right? A month or so? Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, so we finally got it done. So that's awesome. Exactly. Thank you All so right, much. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Speaking you, uh, best of luck not. to you. Best of luck awesome. to you. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All see right. Later. We'll see you. Bye-bye.